On day one, you're going to add one half cup of the 50-50 flour mixture and one third cup of filtered water to your jar. Use a spatula to stir this up really, really well. Making sure that you get all the dried clumps incorporated. And you're just going to scrape down the sides really good. I like to take some water on a rag and just kind of clean up around the sides of the jar a little bit. Put the top on the jar and then let that sit for 24 hours. On day two, we're not going to add anything to the jar. You can see that there's hardly any bubbles. I see maybe one. So what we're gonna do is just give it a little stir. This will just help incorporate some air into the mixture. And that's it. Put the top back on and let it sit for another 24 hours. Okay, this is the morning of day three. And as you can see, there's lots of bubbles on top of the starter, so it is nice and active. Okay, so now that we are on day three and we have kind of let this sit, we're gonna go ahead and start to discarding and feeding every single morning. So what you wanna do is get a clean jar and let's just go ahead and stir up the starter a little bit. Then we're gonna take three tablespoons of the starter and put it into the clean jar. Okay. We'll take the uh, we'll take this starter and this will either go in your compost or you just discard it, just throw it away. To this, we're going to add one half cup of the 50-50 flour mixture, the whole wheat and all-purpose flour. And then we're going to add one third cup of filtered water. And let's go ahead and give that a really good stir. Just remember, you always wanna make sure that you're, you're really incorporating everything together really, really well. You don't want any dry spots in this. So now just scrape down all the sides with your spatula. Okay, and then if there's any, um, anything on the sides, I like to take my uh, filtered water and simply just clean that up. All right, so at this point, um, you're going to start seeing some activity uh, every single morning. So I suggest just taking a rubber band and putting it around the jar at the level that the starter is. And that way you can see uh, every morning if it's risen and fallen and just kind of gauge the activity. So what we're gonna do is put the top back on and we're gonna let this sit for 12 hours. It's been 12 hours since our AM feeding and you can see that the starter has risen uh, about doubled and if you look on the top there's lots and lots of activity going on so um, we're gonna go ahead with our PM feeding and we're not gonna discard anything we're simply going to add two tablespoons of flour 
and then a tablespoon and a half about a tablespoon and a teaspoon or so just to make it easy and we're just going to stir this right into the starter this is going to feed it while it's sitting overnight so it doesn't run out of food to keep building up the yeast in the starter. So by doing this method where we are discarding and feeding in the morning and then just simply adding a little bit of food in the evening, we're cutting down on a lot of waste. Okay, so we're just scraping down the size as usual. I always just like to go and, and clean up around the inside of the jar. So, and then clean the rim. Just make sure there's no gook. That's basically what you're doing. I just like to keep everything pretty clean. Okay, so we're going to put the top back on. I'm going to slide this little rubber band up just so I know where it started. All right, so we're just going to let this sit on the counter again and uh, I'll come back on day four and I'll let you see what it looks like uh, on day four in the morning. It's the morning of day four and you can see there's plenty of bubbles on the top of the uh, starter. So we're going to go ahead and do our discard and feed. see you in 12 hours for the p.m. feeding. This is the evening of day four, so we're gonna give it a p.m. feeding. show you what it looks like tomorrow morning. It's the morning of day five and I just want you to see the the top of the starter. It is very liquidy and that just means that the yeast are getting more and more hungry. They're eating a lot of the the food that we're giving it and so it didn't rise at all. Um, actually it may have risen and gone back down overnight. I can't really tell but this is perfectly normal, okay? You do see the bubbles and everything on top, so that's really what you're what you're looking for. So again, this is the morning of day five, so I'm going to go ahead and do the the AM feeding. back for the p.m. feeding in just a little bit. Okay, we're at the end of day five. You can see that it has risen and there's bubbles. So 
see if you can see the top there. So let's go ahead and give it its nightly feeding. guys it's the morning of day six and if you see on top lots of bubbles it did rise overnight and I'm not sure if you can see it right here in the back there's this line it rose and then it fell back down so at this point I'm gonna assume that it's not strong enough to bake bread so maybe another day or two so let's go ahead and just do our normal I'm feeding. It's the evening of day six, and I just want you to see that the starter has doubled in size. So it is very active. Uh, you can look on the top and see lots and lots of bubbles. So this is what you should be seeing on the evening of day six. Let's go ahead and give it its feeding. This is the morning of day seven. It rose and fell. So I'm gonna give it a morning feeding. And then in about four or five hours, we're gonna do a float test to see if this can actually um, be used to bake bread on the seventh day. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and discard and feed it with the normal AM feeding. It's been four hours since I have fed the starter on day seven in the morning so you can see it is doubled so what i'm going to do is what is called a float test and that is where we take a small portion of the starter and put it into a bowl of warm water or i'm not sorry not warm water a bowl of room temperature water and if it floats then it's ready to bake bread and you can see the starter is floating. So I'm going to go ahead and use this starter in a loaf of bread and I will show you the results.
here you go guys I just finished baking this about an hour ago and you can see that it has a really good rise really nice oven spring nice and golden so let's go ahead and slice this open and we'll see what the crumb looks like And there you have it. It's possible to create a sourdough starter that will give you bread in about seven to eight days.